Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we're going to take a look at influencer marketing with a nationally known expert. His story just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I run into influencers all the time, or want to be influencers. They want to be the next Kim Kardashian, but it's not as easy as just throwing up a TikTok page and, and producing videos. To talk about that today, Richard Harmer, he's the founder of Uncom Media. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Jeff. And I mean, you probably run into young people all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm going to become an influencer. Every day. <laughs> okay, what, what, tell us how your company helps people. So we, we are the go-between brands mm -hmm. and influencers. So what most people don't realize, brands ha are having a hard time connecting with influencers and influencers, they're just creating video and they don't understand the business side, Jeff. So we have figured out a way to aggregate audiences with the influencers and teach them about the business side, but also teach the value of what they bring to the table to the business executives. Sure. And there are strategies that you employ to make sure that an influencer grows an audience. I've followed people before and mm -hmm. their stuff becomes boring to me or predictable and sure. suddenly they, they lost me. Uh, what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to influencers? First of all, they have to create a lot of content. So when someone, like you just said, they come to me and say, I want to be an influencer. Well, first of all, you have to think of yourself not as an influencer, but as a content creator. So you are basically creating content constantly. Some of my guys, um, are they create seven, nine videos a day. Some of the takes may take 20 to 30 takes to be able to create one short video, right? And I think you know there's a fundamental misunderstanding about what it actually takes to be an influencer because you're actually a content creator first. But then how do you turn that into money? How do you monetize that, right? And part of it is getting an audience. You have to be able to get an audience. And so you're fine tuning a couple things, right? And most uh, people that create content, they don't understand that variable and how their content can be used for say products or services, right? Um, so my approach to them is get ready to create some content because you're going to need about eight to 10 hours a day, literally just doing that one thing. We, you've been a storyteller for a long time. We've known each other for at least a decade and a half. And we share some clients. Today, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. right. And I'm really impressed with his website. As we scroll down the website, I want to call your attention to the fact that it's fun. It's funky. It, <laughs> it is uncommon, um, yeah. just like, like uh, your yeah. name implies. Uh, tell us about some of your services. So my primary focus is on corporate communications. So if you kind of look at me like the, the person that creates the message and the strategy before it goes to someone like yourself, um, that'd be the perfect scenario, right? Um, along the way though, I realized that part of building a strategy is building a community, right, Jeff? And we were able to take what we did with Uncom Media and create another agency from that okay, and create an influencer agency. So not only are we focused on the corporate communications and crisis communications, which as you know, I've done for uh, a number of years, we were able to take that and apply that same logic to an influencer agency. Yes. So right now with just nine uh, guys on my team or influencers, content creators, uh, we have 85 million followers. Um, we, we represent mega influencers. So what started as corporate communications, I got this side of the fence 
right? But I'm also able to jump over to this side of the fence and help them, right? And, and you've had some really big clients, um, the Mavericks in the past, you helped them mm -hmm. through a crisis. In 2018. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and now NASCAR. Okay, how exciting is that? So we actually leave to go to Bristol uh, on Thursday. So Speedway Motorsports represents, um, they own 11 tracks uh, around the country, including right here at Texas Motor Speedway. And so we make appearances uh, with NASCAR with our influencers. And Jeff, I realized um, something happened last year um, with the data. Data tells a story, right? You can, you can take data and you, 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 it's, it's black and white. It, data is what it is, right? So we realized that just my guys, we had more impressions and engagement than NASCAR, the lead sponsor, the driver that won the race, and all three TV stations that aired the race combined did not reach up to my influencer who was first and another influencer was second. Wow combined. So when you talk about the value of what that means to say a partner or a sponsor, Jeff, th that's a big deal. That It's such a big deal. It, it, it opened up my eyes, certainly just looking at the Excel spreadsheet. And look, I hate Excel spreadsheets. I am an anti Excel spreadsheet human. But that told me a story that I was, it was shocking to sure. say the least. And one of the platforms that you embrace as I is uh, podcasting. We're going to go down your, your podcast page. I love kind of the cool, <laughs> funky uh, podcasts that you host, including your own. I do, yeah. So we stumbled upon the podcast Rock and Rich with my partner um, in 20, uh, 21. Yeah, in 21. And we grew really fast. Look, we get some celebrities, we get athletes, and we get you know um, certain executives. But our whole goal there was to tell the story of the impact that they're making in the community. You know, our first guest was Jason Witten, and it's such an, an amazing guy. He has an incredible story, Jeff. And I think when you tell those stories of people overcoming adversity, mm -hmm. and you can tell them in such a way that gives them a long format, it allows other people to be inspired and, and, and to not give up, right? And we didn't have any expectations of the show, and now we're in the top uh, one and a half percent in the world for podcasts. That's amazing. And we're still independent and I am proudly independent by the way. Yes. We, yeah. Talk to me about your podcast style because you didn't come up through the traditional channels of broadcasting, uh, mm -hmm. but you're, you're very comfortable. I mean, to me, like you're just a, a chat between friends. Is that kind of your philosophy? We, we do a little bit of research of who our guests are, but then beyond that, there is not a set, um, there's not a set takeaway. There's not set bullet points. It's very conversational, which to me is more of a natural uh, way to approach a podcast because you truly get a, a, a an, an authentic reaction to some of their stories. Mm. And 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 I have known you quite well, so you know I think that authenticity uh, goes a long way, as you know. Absolutely. And you do the same thing in journalism. Um, how you react sometimes is just how you react. Yes. And I've always appreciated that about you. I, I thank you. Another uh, fun fact about Richard is he's uh, worked with two of the of the sharks from Shark Tank. Uh, Mark Cuban, who we already mentioned, yeah. and Kevin Harrington. Right. Uh, we're going to put up your Side View Ventures page because I want you to talk a little bit more about this. Yeah. Side View Ventures, uh, we've teamed up with Kevin Harrington, who was one of the original Shark Tanks, and a a bunch of other um, amazing, phenomenal people who are in the product space. And so um, I wanted to use a cheat code to get products and brands connected to my influencers. Well, it just so happens my partners with Sideview Ventures, we have 990 different products and organizations that we have worked with over the years or the members of Sideview Ventures have worked with over the years. So we spun up Sideview Ventures um, to buy uh, businesses. And one of the businesses is Uncom Management Agency, which is the division of Uncom Media that, that represents the influencers. And so I, I got to tell you, working with you know people like Kevin or, or Mark, or, it excels. It, you excel because of how they think about the world. Sure. Right? And it gives you a whole new perspective on what's new, what's original, and what's not. Okay, for the brand that's watching right now that has never gone down the path of uh, influencer marketing, uh, talk about the advantages compared to like traditional advertising, radio, television, billboards. Right. When you 
the, the worst words are, here's our Nielsen ratings, right? And you and I know you created this whole studio because the way that the media is and the way that, um, you know, more or less TV is nowadays, they can't get the data like that, right? And so what we've been able to do is say, hey, look, brand, we were able, we're able to aggregate an audience that fits your demographic profile perfectly, okay? And our engagement is higher than it would be on TV. And if you pay attention to any 15-year-old or any one of us, what do you do during a commercial break? Go to the bathroom, get, go get something to eat. And then you scroll your phone. Yep. Right? So people, they're not scrolling their phone. They're watching like videos on their phone. They're watching TikTok. They're watching Instagram. They're watching Facebook, right? And so how do you help brands um, understand that value of you could pay $5 million for a TV commercial, but just to have everybody walk away, I can prove data wise you will have more engagement with what we're doing so if you're a brand out there you have to pay attention you have to understand that the the world of content creators is small just like any other world and a lot of the people know each other so what we were able to do with the management agency was say hey how do we get like-minded individuals together with the same aggregated audience whose brand affinity is the same Right. Yes. And that's exactly what we did. That's why whenever we'll have a, one of our guys who has a product, um, someone will send um, someone a, a product, Jeff, and we can shut down a website because we get so much traffic to it instantly. Wow. We had, um, we had a guy send us some product. Um, he sent us $40, his, his cost $40 total to one of our guys. And he sold seventy thousand dollars worth of product in an hour. That's crazy. Yeah. So, and when was the last time you heard of a commercial or a TV? You don't, right? Right. And so, not only is it instant, but it, it has such a, a long term value if the brands um, establish long term relationships with the aggregated audiences that the influencers hold. And are you starting to see some old classic brands waking up to the fact that they've got diminishing returns with traditional advertising and, and they got to get aboard this train? They are. You know what gets in the way is red tape, right? Like red tape and legal because, you know, it's like working with, you know, NASCAR and, and working with, um, you know, Speedway Motorsports. There are a lot of nuances and contracts and, you know, you're constantly bobbing and weaving in that. So as long as you're cognizant of that, and you can go to them with an approach that takes that um, that into consideration, you can actually um, make some headway. They're starting to wake up in a way that I, it surprises me because of their the traditional mindset mentality. Um, but the money's there um, for our influencers and for our guys, and the value is there for the brands, the big brands, and I think they're starting to see that. The biggest thing that I always tell brands or executives when I'm in front of them is you have to remember that communities matter. When we go to this next level of, of web, web three, we imagine us, we're going to be immersed into a platform, right? We're going to be able to watch videos. We're going to be able to explore within our own world and then buy things in our own world and in our own communities right there we're completely immersed in where we're at we don't have we, we're no longer bouncing out to go to amazon to buy a product we're no longer bouncing out to surf around the web we are completely immersed in a world brands need to go to that mm. and go into the communities versus expecting the communities to come to them very powerful uh well you are uh, definitely uh a, a trailblazer when it comes to influencer marketing. In the final minute left, uh, final thoughts, what would you like to leave people with? I think now is the time. If you are gonna get on board with what's happening in news media or media or content creation, now is the time. In the next three years, Jeff, we are gonna see a fundamental shift in how brands interact with influencers and content creators and celebrities. It's going to be a fundamental shift. It's coming. If you are not getting on board, you will be left behind. I can guarantee it. Wow. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to end with the website, which is uncom.media. Yep. 
Thanks so much for coming on the show. No, thank you, Jeff. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. Thank you.